Hey, Jody Holland here. We're back on the Psyche of Success vlog. I'm glad to have you guys back. Today we're going to be talking about authentic communication. Love this topic. Honestly, I love all my topics, but I really love this topic. My degree in college, my bachelor's degree was in communication, so this is right up my alley. Make sure if you haven't ordered your copy of Yay I'm a Supervisor off of Amazon or off of my website, go do that. Also, if you want to go through the book study with us, make sure you go to jodyholland.com slash yaysupervisor.html and look down in the notes, subscribe to this vlog, as well as follow me on Twitter, Jody and Holland, and look for me on Facebook, Jody Holland Training and Speaking. All right, talking about authentic communication today. We interact with employees, but even more importantly, we interact with ourselves. I know what you're thinking, but I don't talk to myself. Wait, you just did it. You do the same thing that I do that everyone else does. That intrapersonal communication is what we say to us. And to be honest, going back to the beginning of this vlog, you realize that that belief loop, that is our intrapersonal communication. What do I say to me about the world, about my employees, about my job, about everything? Because what I'm saying to me determines what I'm looking for in other people. When we're listening, we have the capacity in our brain to listen between 400 and 600 words per minute. That's a lot. However, the average speaker is only talking at 125 words a minute. I have burst up to about 300 words, but mostly I'm about 125 words a minute as well. As you're listening to people, you have the capacity for cognition, processing what they're saying, as well as metacognition, that outer layer where you're thinking about what you're thinking about. In that metacognition, you can either think about what they're saying and go through it in your mind, or you can think about other things like, what am I going to say to these other people? The problem that most people have is that when they're listening, they're really not listening to understand. They're listening so that they can get their turn to talk next. That's not what we're supposed to do when we're listening. As a leader, as a manager, you spend 45% of your time listening. That is more than anything else that you do. Yet the question I have for you is when in your life did you learn to listen? I don't know either. I didn't take a class in junior high on how to listen. Didn't take one in high school. My senior year in college, again, with a degree in communication, that's the first time that I took a class on listening. The class was called Active Listening. Only class with the word listening in it that I took for my whole degree. Now, considering the fact that communication is primarily about listening, and I didn't take a class until my senior year, it helps you to understand why so many people struggle with it. As a side note, I really think if I would have had a class on listening, say my freshman year in high school, dating would have been a whole lot easier. We spend 9% of our time writing. We spend 16% of our time reading, including websites and books and everything else. We spend 30% of our time speaking, unless you have my job, which is public speaking and professional training and speaking, then you spend a little bit more, but 30% for the normal person. 45%, the biggest chunk of our time is spent listening. That is a lot of time. Now you think about the type of listener that you can be. If you're a bad listener, you're biased. You go into listening already with a preconceived notion of what you want to hear from that other person or already a label in mind of who they are. So what you're doing is filtering out the stuff that doesn't make sense and going, yep, I knew they were a bad person. I knew that's who they were because that's all you're paying attention to. The distracted listener is always doing other things. They're thinking about, I need to take a drink. I need to check my phone. Ooh, I wonder what's going on on Facebook. So they're looking at other things instead of fully focusing on what's going on right then. Then you have the impatient listener. These people are so much fun to mess with. If you're around an impatient listener, you'll know because if you slow down what you're saying and you pause a couple of times, what you'll find is their mouth starts going, like they want to finish your sentence, like, oh my gosh, please just say what you want to say. Back when I was in college, we just called them communication majors. We always knew what you needed to say next, and we couldn't wait to finish it for you because obviously you didn't know what was in your head. That impatient listener is always trying to get to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Sometimes these people will actually look at their watch and then turn and walk away in the middle of your sentence. 
You've got to be careful not to be that impatient listener. The fourth type of bad listener is the passive listener. They're the ones that think, well, I can do other stuff because listening is just about the words that you're saying. Civil truth is 93% of what we interpret in a person's message is based on their nonverbals. Listening is an active sport. You have to be fully engaged with that person in order to get it right. A good listener is looking for first information, trying to understand what you're saying, how you're saying it, and what your overall intent of the message was. The empathetic listener, as described by Frederick Platt, is the person that's trying to connect with you and get the underlying emotion in the message that you're sending across. So we're looking not just for the words that you said, but the underlying meaning in the message that you were giving us. And then the third type is the analytical listener. When we're listening to solve a problem at work, we're trying to understand what the employee is saying, but trying to read beyond just the surface. Most of the time when somebody has a problem, they go, oh, I've got a problem. And you go, okay, but that's a symptom of a problem. So we listen in such a way that we can get past the surface and try to understand the underlying message and what's really causing that problem. When we are listening actively to other people, we're trying to create a connection. To create that connection, what it uh, requires is that we're looking at that person we're saying, okay, I'm going to listen to what you're saying and I'll be focused on you. So step one is focus on the person. If you're over here or you're looking at a computer or you're messing with other stuff, you're not focused on the person. Remember, William James said, that which I perceive is my reality. If they perceive that you're not focused on them, you're not. So stop what you're doing. Don't check your email. Don't look at Facebook. Don't look at anything else. Just focus on that person. The second thing that you have to watch for to be a great listener is now that you're focused on that person, you have to respond non-verbally to them. People feed off of you as speakers. So if you're talking to them and you've got the blank stare, you're not responding to them. Change your eyebrows, change your facial expression, move your face around, use some nonverbals. Make sure that they know that you are connected inside that message. The third thing that you do is you ask good questions. You've gotta be able to ask good questions that demonstrate you're engaged and ask for more information. They can be questions like, so tell me more about that. I'm not sure how you got there. Can you go back and explain that again? Oh, wow, okay, so what about and so you're asking these questions that pull more information out of the person. They're open-ended. And the fourth phase of being a great or active listener is you've now got to feed back what you heard the person say, but put it in your own words. So you're trying to take that message and create a summary and connect the dots and say, wow, that must have been X. My wife, when she was doing her student teaching, was in a fairly rough school doing that student teaching. She would come home and tell me these stories. And in the beginning, I would say, you know, you really need to tell the principal to do this. You better do this. You need to tell the parents to do that. And she would respond like a lot of the girls that I dated before her with, why are you always trying to solve my problem? Why can't you just listen? Thinking, why did you come to me with a problem if you didn't want an answer? My mistake was I wasn't actively listening. After I learned this, which was about the time she was going through her student teaching, I thought, I'm gonna try it. So I said, okay, focus on the person respond non-verbally, ask good questions, feedback what you heard. So I stop everything else I'm doing, she tells me a story, I'm focused on her, I'm responding non-verbally to the story, and I said, well, what did you do then? Well, what about this, what about that? And then I finally said, that must have been scary. I totally got it wrong, and yet I got it perfectly right. It wasn't scary. She said, no, 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 it wasn't scary, I was just disappointed. Going back to step three, disappointed, what do you mean? She describes it further, I go, oh, so what you're saying is, and I described what I heard her saying, but in my own words. We went through that whole conversation and she said, you know, there's something different about you today. I feel so much more connected with you. That is the benefit of active listening. You're more connected with people, whether it's your spouse, your kids, your coworkers, your employees, or even your boss. When you learn to listen actively, you have an authentic connection with them. It makes all the difference in the world. The process of communication, I have a sender, a receiver, a message, what I'm saying, and a medium. The vlog is the medium right now. You look at all of these things and you go, okay, 
You are sending a message, but you're encoding that message with all your past experience, your emotion, all of that. I send it across this medium, in this case the vlog, and you receive it. You're then decoding that message based on your interpretation of what you believe it means based on your experiences connected to your image of me. You decode it, and then if you leave a comment or share it with a friend, you're basically giving me feedback. So it's sender, receiver, message, and medium, and then a feedback loop. All of that goes into the communication process at work, and it goes to create an authentic connection with us. On another vlog, I'll go a little deeper into this, and I'll talk to you about how you read people in 10 seconds or less, how you make sense of the world around you, and why people are responding the way that they are. Make sure you're going through the book study because the questions that we have in that study will help you to process this information and make sense of it. You can get the book on Audible as well as you can get it on Amazon. So if you're more of an audio person, go check it out. The book is, yay, I'm a supervisor. Oh man, I'm a supervisor, now what? As you go through the book, you're learning these specific skills and then you're applying them in the workplace. That's what the questions do and that's what these videos do is help you learn how to apply it. I'm Jody Holland for the Psyche of Success. Make sure you subscribe to the blog. Make sure you share it with your friends. Follow me on Twitter at Jody and Holland. Also follow me on Facebook, like our page. Look for Jody Holland Training and Speaking. I can't wait to see you next time. I'm Jody Holland.